Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining me. We're going to tie up uh, everything we've been talking about this week. I'm looking at In God I Trust in Psalm 32 when I'm in need of forgiveness. And uh, we've looked at uh, that God is gracious and good. His loving kindness is everlasting and he, he will forgive if we will come to him, uh, how happy, how joyful is the person whose sin has been forgiven, has been carried away by God, has been covered over by God. And then uh, there is this encouragement that, you know, don't keep silent. When I was silent, oh, the agony of when I didn't confess my sin, but when I confessed it, God lifted it away and he carried away my guilt. And then so because of that, because God is gracious and good and because it's so much uh, the, the liberation of being restored in fellowship with God is so great, uh, and the, the release from guilt, the release from this physical torment and mental anguish that one goes through uh, when, when the confession is made, God immediately releases us from that guilt and forgives us and fellowship is restored. And because of that, um, seek God while he may be found. That's what we talked about yesterday. There comes a time when God cannot be found, uh, either through death or the hardening of the heart, uh, the Spirit no longer strives with us because we've rejected God over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, and so uh, David finishes up with this quote from God and then how not don't be like a dumb animal. Don't be, don't be without reason. Listen and, and, and walk with God. So uh, in verse 8, I will, this is God speaking, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And so you'll notice that David says that, or God is speaking, and God says, I will instruct, uh, I will give counsel, uh, and I will teach you in the way you should go. And that word uh, for I will instruct means to give insight or understanding. And to teach means just to teach. And counsel is to give advice in the way you should go. So in all three areas, God will teach us, he will instruct us, he will give us insight and understanding, and he will uh, give counsel, he will uh, give us advice on what to do, where to go, where to walk, how to do that. And so, and he does so with his eye upon us. So he's a watchful eye, uh, looking out for us, watching out for us, guiding us because he sees where we're going. He knows where we need to end up and, and how to get there. And so he will guide us. He will direct us. He will instruct us. He will give advice. If we seek him, if we seek him, God will do this for his people. Uh, and in verse 9, David says, Don't be like a horse or a mule which has no understanding, whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near you. Uh, what he's talking about there is uh, you know, the horse and the mule, you got to put a bit and a bridle on them to turn them in the way. They, they have to be forced to be obedient to their master. He says, Don't be like that. We, as believers, we should run to do God's will. We should be overjoyed to do God's will. It should be the most satisfying thing we can do is to do God's will. And so he says, don't be, don't be like these animals that have to be guided by force. Uh, be willful, willingly uh, surrender uh, to God and guide. let him guide you and direct you and be anxious to hear what God has to say regarding what you're doing. And so I think we need to speak to God. We need to pray. We need to we communicate with God about our decisions that we're making, about what we need to do. And he will guide us. How does he guide us? Well, he guides us by his word. He guides us by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He guides us from godly friends and so forth. Uh, and so ultimately we find out the decision through prayer. We'll be guided by God's word. We're guided by friends. We're guided by the Holy Spirit. But I think it's in prayer that we uh, really can say, God, close these doors. Open the one you want me to go through and be guided and directed by God and listen to his counsel and his word uh, and uh, get, get instruction from God's word. Because if we are obedient to God's word, that knocks out a lot of decisions we're trying to make. Uh, let's see, should I have that affair? No, uh, God's word says not to. Uh, let's see, should should I be for castrating little boys and, and uh, uh, doing gender transitions on little children or anyone for that matter? Should, should, I, should I be for that? No, God's word says not to be for that. Uh, so so the, it eliminates a lot of the gray areas, eliminates a lot of the questions. The ones that if we will listen to God, listen to his counsel, listen to what he says, his instruction, his teaching, his advice with his eye upon us. And that means that I, like a father who watches over us and wants to see us do well and wants, to, wants us to not only survive but to thrive and, and be all that we can be, if I can borrow that phrase. And in verse 10, many are the sorrows of the wicked, and that word there means great, and, and not only many, but great. 
uh, are the sorrows of the wicked. These, the wicked are those who have rejected God, those who don't know God, those who refuse God. They're the wicked. They practice wickedness, as we see earlier. They practice crookedness. They have crooked ways. Uh, and so he says many, they have many sorrows. But he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness shall surround him. That word trust means to have confidence in or to rely upon. Those whose confidence is in the Lord, those who rely upon the Lord. We have fallen completely on the Lord. Uh, we have a relationship with him. Clearly by the word Lord that is used there. I don't know if I've shared this or not, but all caps L-O-R-D means uh, the covenant name, the relational name of God, the Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, the tetragrammaton. Uh, so it says, and loving kindness shall surround him. The one who trusts in God, the one whose confidence is in God, who has relied upon God, um, God's loving kindness, his chesed, uh, that's, that's a difficult word to translate into English, but it means um, loving goodness, um, unending love is a good way of putting it, God's never-ending love. And it's always within covenant. It's always within a covenant relationship that this word is used of God. And so um, it is as we have this relationship with God that, that we're surrounded by his loving kindness and his, his uh, never-ending love, I guess you could put it that way. And then verse 11 is it directly to us. Uh, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones. Uh, so we're to be glad in the Lord. We're to have our gladness in him because of who he is and what he's done for us and what he is doing for us and, and simply because of who he is. And I wonder sometimes if, if we're glad in the Lord. Does that ever describe us? Are we glad in the Lord? Is our joy, do we rejoice in the Lord? Do we rejoice in him? Do we rejoice in who he is and the, the forgiveness that we have and, and the relationship that we have with God through faith in Jesus Christ? Is that something we rejoice about? Is that something we're glad in? I don't know, uh, but we're supposed to be. Uh, if you are a righteous, if you're one who's been put right, if you're one who's been declared in the right by God, uh, shout for joy. And that, that shout is to cry, the victory cry in battle, that you've won the victory. Uh, we, we should be shouting for joy because the victory has been won for us by Jesus Christ. And if we have trusted him as Lord and Savior, then we have that victory over sin and death as well. All you are upright in heart who are not crooked in heart who are straight in heart. Same thing as saying the righteous ones. It's Hebrew parallelism uh, in poetry, not crooked or perverse in heart. So the end of it all, the end of forgiveness should be gladness, rejoicing, not only that we've been forgiven, but because of who, who, who has forgiven us. Uh, God Almighty has, and he wants a relationship with us, and his loving kindness surrounds us. He lifts up our guilt and carries it away, covers over our sin, uh, and, and, and forgives us. And, and so the end of that is that we should be joyful and rejoice in him, be glad in him, be glad in the Lord. Uh, all you who are upright in heart, uh, those of you who trust in God, I rejoice. And I wonder, I hope that you rejoice in God. I wonder if you, uh, that you are glad in him because he has set us at liberty and he loves us and he's set us free and he's given us a, uh, a, a new heart, a new creation. And, and, and I wonder if, if you have experienced that. If you haven't, uh, I encourage you to seek out the Lord uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe you don't have a church home. If you don't, I would love for you to come to Troy First Baptist. Be my guest. I would love to talk with you about Jesus Christ, about being saved, about what it is to have your sins forgiven and how you can rejoice and have joy, true joy in your life uh, over in the presence of God, knowing him. I pray that for you, my friend, because God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He gave his son, Jesus. You might have forgiven us of sin, eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that that's yours. And I also pray that you know the peace of God, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, wants to give you that as well. I personally think there are so many believers who don't have peace. They have salvation, but they don't have peace. That peace Jesus wants to give to us, the assurance that God is working all things out. We can be at peace inside, be still inside. I think about the still waters, David says, that he leads us by, uh, the green pastures that he makes us to lie down in. Uh, that, that, that can be yours, that kind of peace, the peace with God, peace with yourself, peace with other people can be yours, the shalom of God. I pray that that's true for you, my friend. Hey, listen, my prayer is that you know God through faith in Jesus Christ. 
uh, and that um, and that His peace rests upon you, your home, your family, your loved ones, now and forevermore. Until we meet again, either Sunday, Troy First Baptist, small groups, nine o'clock, worship at ten fifteen, or if I see you again Monday as we take up another psalm in this series in God I Trust. Uh, either way, uh, I pray uh, that God's peace rests upon you. Till we meet again, shalom, my friend.